7 a.m. on a Saturday morning, and I'm headed into Walmart to do some shopping. Of course, I'm shopping for bikes, but I'm not shopping for the type bike I usually buy from Walmart. No mountain-style bike here. Today, I'm looking for something different, a cruiser. This is the cruiser rack at Walmart. It's quite a selection, but I didn't come for any cruiser. I came for this specific one. This is a Huffy Cranbrook, under 80 bucks. A steel men's cruiser with a coaster brake. But that doesn't mean I'm not easy to persuade. Let's look at what else they have. Like this Kent Bayside. The Bayside's a nice looking bike. I really like those red rims. But it's got something that I didn't come looking for. I'm not looking for gears today. And this has a rear derailleur. I also caught a glimpse of the Schwinn Midway. 150 bucks. I love the Schwinn name. A lot of nostalgia there. But unfortunately, this bike also has a rear derailleur. This looks nice and it doesn't have a rear derailleur. It's also a Huffy, so that's a plus. This is the Huffy Nel Lusso, but it costs more than the Cranbrook. Thing is, I think that the Cranbrook fits a niche that doesn't exist anymore. You hear everyone talk about how sturdy their old bike they bought from a big box store was back when they were a kid. Well, I'm thinking that maybe back then, bikes weren't trying to do what they're trying to do today. None of the marketing and the mountain bike styles and the full suspensions, all this stuff companies are trying to throw onto these bikes without increasing the price. That means quality's gonna suffer. So that's my theory. I take this Cranbrook off the shelf the way they assemble it at Walmart, and it should last for years without any problem. Well, that is until I ran into a problem. That is that the one on the shelf had a warped rim. I checked with the employees and they only had one more bike in the store and it was boxed up. And the bike assembler wasn't going to be there till Monday. I planned on riding today. Plus, I brought my small car with a Saris bike rack. I have no way of transporting a boxed bike home. While I am looking for old school durability, that doesn't mean that I'm not modern enough to want something right now. So I need to look for an alternative. What about that Nel Lusso? Nel Lusso is Italian for in luxury. That might explain why it costs more than the Cranbrook, because the components look like they were the same thing as the Cranbrook, just with a fancy paint job and a couple extra racks and a chrome medallion. Who am I to let costs get in the way of pseudoscience? I plunked down 130 bucks and I'm out the door with this thing. Let's just hope that Nel Lusso doesn't also translate to Fragile. I let my pseudoscientific ambition get in the way of common sense and planning. I brought my Saris bike rack. The Saris Super Clamp has a problem clamping down onto metal fenders. This bike has metal fenders. So that means I had to use some Alabama engineering to come up with a way to get this thing two and a half miles to home. After a very slow drive home, I made it. Nothing was damaged, even the tags were still in place. Now that I've got it home, I get to look at what I bought for 130 bucks out in the sun. It does look good. Now it's important to note, I'm not going to do any adjustment on this bike. I'm riding it exactly as it came off the shelf. All I'm doing is taking off any hang tags and warranty information and looking at the placard to see what they say it can do. Looks like they're pretty honest in this case. For 130 bucks, you get chrome wide sweeping handlebars with huffy comfort grips that come poorly adjusted, kind of at the wrong angle. Beside the chrome quill stem is a plastic huffy cup holder. Now it's plastic, but it looks like leather. A nice touch is on the other side, you have a cell phone holder. This fit my iPhone 7 Plus. Figured I would get an aluminum Huffy name placard, being with all the chrome that's on this bike. Instead, you get a foil sticker. That pans out to show that nice basket up front. This thing can hold 10 pounds. Most of this bike is steel, very little plastic. I was pleasantly surprised to see that the fenders are steel. And by modern standards, they're very thick, as is the Huffy Rigid Fork. Now I'm a sucker for tires that aren't black, so these coral colored 26 by 2.1 generic street tires look great, and they have tan sidewalls. The steel frame has a very yesteryear look to it, and it's all steel. The only plastic on it is that chrome medallion that says Huffy since 1892. With all the beefy components, I was shocked to see how cheap the stickers look on this bike. Not good at all, but the saddle, very nice. Has a leather look to it, but it's actually vinyl. But a cool touch is the sewn-in Huffy branding on the back. The steel rear rack can handle 22 pounds. Add the 10 from the front and you get 32 pounds of potential cargo carrying capability. The rear steel fender has a reflector position like an old tail light. And that coral tire contrasts perfectly against all this black steel. But the chain guard looks kind of like an old western flyer chain guard. Really cool. It's steel. Not sure of the gearing ratio, but the crank arms are chrome and round. 
The pedals look like they're designed solely for comfort. There are hills in every direction leaving my house, so I need to get this fixed gear bike onto flat ground. That means I'm going to transport it. Can't do that on the Ceres, so I'm going to use my old Harbor Freight rattle rack. If I can get the bike on it, it may work out much better than the Ceres for this bike. With the strategic use of some zip ties and padding, I think I've got this thing on this Harbor Freight rack. Should get me where I need to go. Got the bike off the rack and I turned around and I saw this. Couldn't believe how well the bike looked like it fit. As a matter of fact, it fits so well, I was so excited I hopped on it without a helmet. Made it about 50 feet before I realized I'm riding a Walmart assembled bike without a helmet. With my helmet on, I felt a little better about hitting the streets with this thing. And it was smooth. Very smooth. Now it's not fast. This is a cruiser, and by cruiser they apparently mean slow cruising. Because you're not going to break any speed records on this bike. But that's not what it's about. It's about smooth ease. And it does deliver on that. It's very nimble and agile, but you don't go fast. As a matter of fact, my average speed over the entire day of riding this bike was 6 miles an hour. You may not have speed, but you have comfort. And lots of it. This bike traversed streets that I ride daily, and it just floated over bumps. That's because of that dual spring seat that you sit and that upright seating position. Nothing feels like it's happening fast, and nothing feels like it's happening rough. It's just an easy, pleasant, nice ride. All the casual comfort aside, I did have one issue with this bike, and that's that I couldn't stop on it. I could slow down, but that's if I put everything that I have on the bike. I remember coaster brakes when I was a kid, I could lock up the tire easily and slide down a hill. Doesn't happen on this bike, so something's clearly not right. I'm gonna take it by the bike shop on Tuesday, but I'm hoping it doesn't end up like this old Huffy. This was in front of the bike shop. Somebody just gave it up. The brakes are an issue. The only other problem is a problem with me. I'm not conditioned for a single speed bike, so I find out that areas that look flat might not actually be flat. But on flat roads, this thing's perfect and definitely Neluso. I'll be taking it by the bike shop on Tuesday to look at that coaster brake. If I can get that fixed, this thing will be a great long-term experiment. Hope it holds up like I expect it to. There's a lot of steel and not much moving, so maybe this might work. I'll report back with how this thing's doing periodically as I do some good long-term tests. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and stay tuned for more great bike videos.